ladies and gentlemen, so we will call the meeting to order if you would please stand while saying the Pledge to Allegiance and we'll have a brief moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. on the agenda tonight are the consent items. First up, the minutes of the December 18, 2017 regular board meeting. Any, and if there's no objection, we'll go through all these together, otherwise we can do them singly. Any objection to doing them all together on minutes? No. Any additions, deletions, corrections on the minutes for the 2018 meeting? Certification to January 10th, 2018 executive session. Any additions, deletions, or corrections on executive <coughs> session minutes? Minutes of the January 10th, 2018 organizational meeting. Is there any, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the minutes there? And the minutes from the January 10th, 2018 public hearing. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to those minutes? In that case, is there a motion to approve the consent items as read? I make a motion. The motion was made by Stacy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the consent items as read, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Financial report. So this evening we have um, item number one, approval of claims, docket number 12,643 through 12,774, totaling $2,818,847.17. We have two payrolls as well. The December 22nd payroll was $455,478.46. And the January 8th payroll of 2018 was $382,061.30. We have two items on the funds report. One of them is the correction to the cash flows that had some erroneous uh, items on there. So that's since been corrected. We had started um, November with and this is, mind you, this capital projects fund with $486,259.24. We had $5,013.53 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month of November for capital projects fund was $56,227.72, leaving us an ending balance of $435,045.05. And moving on to December, cash flows for all of the funds. We're going to start with uh, December in general fund. We started with $516,648.27. We had $997,206.12 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $1,033,662.44, leaving us an ending balance of $480,191.95. Um, and maybe this is just year-end accounting from the state. Is that why is there significantly less, relatively significantly less receipts in December? So the December receipt issue um, ultimately comes down to um, our basic grant, and our basic grant is um, budgeted from the state for all the schools in the state of Indiana. And what was recently found out. Um, around Thanksgiving time in November was that um, due to an influx of more students enrolled in public schools than initially imagined, or calculated, I should say, um, by downstate, you know, uh, kind of like how we do our budget here for um, Rochester schools. So we put, um, we have, you know, budget for X amount of children and that we'll receive funding for X amount of children. Well, on the state level, um, they budget for X amount of children for the entire state of Indiana, and what had happened was uh, more students are enrolled than budgeted. So, so like six or eight thousand—I can't remember what it is. Uh, I, I want to say it was closer to to six thousand. 
where students are enrolled in public education in the state of Indiana. So as a result, again, they work with, you know, work within their appropriation allowances of what has been established for the 2017-2018 year. Um, because those appropriations weren't going to be enough, uh, the decision was made, and as it is um, established in the state statute, that if, if we can't see it unless you know you're given additional appropriations, so that um, our allowance was then cut as well. So now that the legislative session has started, um, there is a bill that is in the works right now as we speak to um, put additional appropriations into the basic grant funding formula, and you'll see in January, I just, um, I've been watching that myself as actually, um, and um, it's been since corrected. There's been a verbal conversation that's had um, between the state legislators and the Department of School Finance of we're gonna make this right, go ahead and <coughs> calculate as you normally would uh, with these appropriations in um, so that schools don't have to miss out on any more months of funding. So, so our January appropriation should be what we were expecting. Exactly. Because they, exactly. it was like 25 million, I think. Yes. It's, it's probably, I guess we're up six to 8,000 students statewide in public schools, I think I saw. Mm -hmm. In statewide, not just. Yeah. Right. And I <laughs> Otherwise, Mrs. Jeans would be really smart. Yeah. <laughs> I commend our legislators for taking prompt action of, of understanding the need and, and taking prompt, prompt action to remedy the situation. So that's, that's a win-win all around. I think they're really under the gun down there anyway. There's a lot going on. Oh, yeah. Any other questions which are not be part of the debt service? So debt service started with two million two hundred and seventy one thousand three hundred and thirty seven dollars and fifty six cents. Had one million five hundred and three thousand four hundred and twenty eight dollars and three cents worth of receipts through our property taxes that we get in June and December. Month to date expenses were one million six hundred and sixty six thousand seven hundred and fifty seven dollars and eighty two cents. Those um, our month to date expenditures were our pay payment of our um, lease rental bonds, and so we're making those um, every uh, those twice a year make payments out. So we had an empty balance of two million one hundred and eight thousand seven dollars and seventy seven cents. So we're a little bit ahead of where we were. In June. We are. We are. About two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Capital projects fund started with $435,045.05. We had $659,528.36 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $75,561.47, leaving us an ending balance of $1,019,011.94. So the year over year ahead in this, in this fund as well, which is great. Transportation fund started with $951,237.75. We had $331,766.14 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $222,100.59, leaving us an ending balance of $1,060,903.30. So um, month to date expenses were a lot higher than normal due to that 150,000 going out to rainy day and the repair and operation fund. So that's um, the explanation of that. Bus replacement fund started with $50,203.54. We had $90,785.37 of receipts, no expenses for the month, leaving us an ending balance of $140,988.91. because uh, that helps us obviously some some funds ebb and flow in a predictable way mm -hmm. um, for the transportation fund it has October 16 listed as the start right there in the year-over-year year. is that just is that really December and we're up 89,000 it is my apologies okay so that's just a type of it should say December but the numbers are correct okay. And then typically what I like to do um, is a year-over-year -year analysis um, in comparison to um, how, 
how we did against our budget um, with our 1782, and um, which tells us how much we can spend for fund. Um, you know, our 1782 is that approved budget, and then it also tells us how much that we get through um, that we should anticipate receiving through property taxes and and other items throughout the year. Um, and so that's what's going to be coming up in February is that year over year analysis and comparison, um, as well as the transfers that were completed as well. Any more questions for Bob? Is there any objection to approving finance report all three? Which rather do them separately? Any objections to doing the financial part? Approval claims the yeah, we'll, we'll do the claims separate. Okay. 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 We'll do the approval of claims separate then. Uh, is there a motion to approve claims 12643 through 12774, totaling two million eight hundred eighteen thousand eight forty seven dollars and seventeen cents? Motion made by Jenny. So I have the. Uh, I'd like to pull out one claim. Okay. Um, Rachel, we had some questions about the conference expense. Okay. Uh, you know, a few months ago, I had somebody ask me why we had two attorneys, and because they saw two sitting here during uh, on Channel Four, and I said, "Well, we're only contract paying one," and uh, Ted said, "Yeah, that's the right answer." Uh, so I looked at the contract, and it does say, you know, Ted Wagner or, or Rachel Arm. The concern here on the conference is, uh, you know, that's a lot of money, $3,377.26. Should the school be paying for both of you? Um, you know, I, I'd like to table it, unless you want to speak for Ted, but until Ted gets back, and then we can yes. all talk, sit down and talk about it. That's fine, because I'm not sure what conversations Ted has had with you all in the in the past about okay. about conferences, conference costs for me. I, I'm not sure. So rather than guessing what what you all talked about, let's let's just table okay, that. That'd be good if so. We can just sit down and talk about it. Sure. That's a lot of money, and there's concern whether we should be paying for two lawyers when you know, the contract says one or the other. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there, is there a specific claim number that that's assigned to for Ballard, you know? Or do we have an invoice number that we can specifically? Yeah, the invoice would be on the upper right, if that's the only one. So okay. the invoice number is, I think it's 2016. It's a long one. Yeah, 2016. 2016-2016-0923-0532. We have 2016-0923-0456. Yeah, and that's our only number that's under the same audit uh, number, so I want to make sure we're specific about it because we still have monthly legal fees that we are contracted for. So I believe I don't want to put words in your mouth there, Tom. No, that, that's, that covers those. The, uh, so for the public record, we want to table 2016-0923-0532 and 2016-0923-0456, is that correct, Tom? Yes. Do we need to make a motion on that, or if we if there's no objection from the board, can we just consider that tabled and address it at the next uh, board meeting? I probably vote to approve the claims minus okay. those that are well, tabled. Okay, is there a motion to approve the claims? Brad, may I ask for Sure, sure, sure. So to be clear, we're just pulling out the conference because right. I, do, I want to make sure we're paying the legal fees that we contracted. I, I, I agree. Okay. Yeah. So yes, it's just a plus. Because we're the contract. Okay. Yes. That's it's why just the conference. Yep. So even if there is something there, the intent is just the conference for the public record. So we make that perfectly clear. Okay. Good point. So is there a motion to approve claims 12643 through 12744? With the exception of the invoice number from Peterson, Wagner, Perkins that I just read, those two invoice numbers, is there a motion for that? So moved. Um, before we do that, is there any other discussion or question? Okay. Motion by t t uh, Tom. Is there a second? A second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving claims 12643 through 12774, with the exception of the invoice numbers previously mentioned from Peterson, Wagner, Perkins, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Uh, student and stakeholder focus donations. Uh, 
we have donations from REMC for $500 for the class of 2018 Senior Breakfast. A donation from Rochester Downtown Partnership for $100 to the RHS Band. Misty Cripe Lollipops to the RMS National Junior Honor Society. The Manitou Monster Triathlon $300 to the track program or RHS Athletics. And the last was the Moose Family Fund Center, socks for students from the Clothes for Joe drive to RMS. Before I accept the motion on that, as we always do, I want to say thank you to our community members who always donate these things to the school. They help so much and it sincerely is appreciated. So thank you for those. Is there any questions? Are there any questions about the donations? Any comments about the donations? In that case, is there a motion to approve the donations as read? So moved. Motion made by Steve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving the motion or the donations as read, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Information analysis, second reading of various policies. Those policies. Oh, we didn't do payroll and funds yet, did we? We just did. Uh, okay. yep. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's on me. Let's go back to the financial report C, subsection <coughs> 2, payrolls, that the teacher and administrators and the to approve that. <laughs> Are there any questions or comments? Thank you, Steve, for catching my ear. Are there any questions or comments about payrolls? The payroll part? Is there a motion to approve the payroll as given? So moved. Motion made by Steve. Is there a second? Did you funds and payrolls, Brad? Uh, just, I'm going to do them all separate. All right. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the payroll as given, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And the funds report. Is there a motion to approve the funds report as given by Val? I move that we approve the funds report with um, the correction for um, the transportation fund that took over from October, year over year, October December, for okay. Okay. Motion made by Jenny with that exception. Is there a second? Second. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the funds report with the exception of Jenny's comment, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. <coughs> now, back to information analysis. Sorry, Jenny, back to you. These are all policies that are the level that we've determined to be straightforward. They're either by statute or they're technical correction. And so um, we we present them as they are. 0122-5510-5200-5461-5840-8531-8540. And they are available on the website. So they are on the website for people to look at. Is there a motion to approve? I'm sorry, is there any question or discussion on the second reading of various policies? Is this where we can do second and third? Rick's not here. I think we should probably move. Yeah, okay. To move to third, you have to find that there's some kind of a pressing need. In that case, is there a motion to approve the second? Well, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Is there any other questions or discussion on the second reading of various policies? In that case, is there a motion to approve the second reading of the various policies? So moved. Move, 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 motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving the second reading of various policies, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Approval of sale slash destruction of surplus items. Well, there is a list here. One of the things that we talked about today in the office is if we get through the LED project, and I just wanted to clarify or maybe add to this to make sure that we do have board approval. When we talked about the LED project, we talked about being able to salvage some of those bulbs and try to resell to the public as well as some of the ballast. We're trying to hold back enough of them. We know that some of the hallway lights may need replacements, those types of things. So we're um, holding back and trying to store uh, 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 a hefty amount. But for those that we just know we're not going to use now that we have the Belcher family donation, I just want to make sure it's clear or add to the list the sale of bulbs and any ballast that we don't believe that we would use to this list as well. So we can clear that out for storage and be able to move forward. We're on track that hopefully by the end of February, the entire district should be done and we'll be able to continue to work away. So the surplus equipment request to auction two each survey meters, model CDV, 
715, one each, dosimeter charger model 750-5B, five each dosimeter pin, model CDV742, simplex fire alarm panel, model 4100U, a green heck exhaust fan, model GB200-4 at 208 volts, one phase, 1725 RPM, four diffusers, six inches by seven inches by 90 inches, four fin tubes, three inches by four inches by 75 inches, Three air transfer boxes, 21 by 21 by 20 by 33 inches. Ductwork, 12 inches by 3 inches by 93 inches. And two vent covers, 56 inches by 36 inches. Any comments or questions on those items up to the auction? This goes on the auction. A couple of deals. <coughs> yes, it will. We'll put a, Scott has been so helpful in that, and I want to thank him as well. The CNC machines that we put up for the auction website brought around $1,900. So it's been working out quite well, and Scott, Scott does a wonderful job. Al does a great job following up on that, and it seems to be working well for the district. And there's currently items listed on there right now, so. That were approved at the last board meeting, so. Any further questions or comments about the surplus items? Is there a motion to approve the sale or destruction of these surplus items? So. Uh, he's close, he's so okay. You know what? I did that last time. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, Jenny made the motion. Is there a second? Uh, second by Steve. And just for clarification, this would include the lights and ballast as well? Okay. That's fine. Okay, thank you. All in favor of approving the sale or destruction of the surplus items, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carries six to zero. Adopting a resolution determining a need for a project, which we had this at our 1028 hearing, but we need to do it at the public meeting as well, another public meeting. Do I need to read this, Rachel, or the exhibit for the determining the need for the project? You can read it, or you can say that it's available on the website if anybody wants to review and look at it, but it's pretty short, so. I'll just so read it's it. up to you. A lot of people watch it up on TV, yeah. so we'll make sure we read it so they don't have to go online. I know if I don't have to, I don't want to either. So, this is Exhibit A, a resolution determining the need for projects, whereas an investigation has been conducted by the Board of School Trustees, the Board of Rochester Community School Corporation, the School Corporation, with respect to the renovation of and improvements to Rochester High School, Rochester Middle School, Little Elementary School, and Columbia Elementary School including site improvements and the purchase of equipment and technology, in parentheses, the projects, and leasing all or a portion of the projects from the Rochester Multi-School Building Corporation, in parentheses, the Building Corporation, and whereas the board now finds that a need exists for the projects, <coughs> excuse me, and that the school corporation cannot provide the necessary funds to pay the cost of the projects required to meet such need, and whereas it is deemed desirable to proceed with the necessary negotiations and all other steps looking <coughs> excuse me, toward the financing of the projects by the building corporation and the lease of such facilities to the, corporate, to the school corporation, now therefore be resolved that a need exists for the projects and that the projects cannot be funded from sufficient funds available to the school corporation and that this board proceed to take such net steps as may be necessary to secure the projects and leasing of such school facilities as provided by the Indiana Code, Title 20, Article 47, Chapter 3. <coughs> Any questions or comments about the resolution determining the need for the project? In that case, is there a motion to approve the resolution determining the need for a project? So moved. Uh, motion made by Tom. Is there a second? Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the resolution, determining the need for the project, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Adopt a resolution approving preliminary plans, preliminary plans, form of lease, and authorizing publication of notice of hearing and lease. This would be exhibit B, whereas Rochester Multi-School Building Corporation, the building corporation has been previously been organized pursuant to the Indiana Nonprofit Corporation Act of 1991 for the purpose of constructing, renovating, and improving facilities for the use of the Rochester Community School Corporation, School Corporation. And whereas the building corporation has drafted and submitted a proposed lease agreement, the lease for a portion of Rochester Middle School building, the lease premises, and whereas preliminary drawings, plans, specifications, and estimates, collectively the documents, 
for the completion of the lease premises have been prepared, and whereas the documents have been submitted to and now meet with the approval of the School Board of Trustees, and whereas such documents have been marked to indicate the work covered by the proposed lease, and whereas it now appears to this board that said preliminary documents provide the necessary facilities for the students in the school corporation, and that the proposed lease with the building corporation provides for a fair and reasonable rental, and whereas by statute, the building corporation is required to own the real estate to be leased to the school corporation, and the school corporation is required to have the value of the real estate determined by court appointed appraisers. Now therefore, be it resolved, the terms and conditions of the proposed lease and the documents are approved and agreed to as the basis for hearing is required by law, and that such hearing should be held by this board upon the necessity for the execution of such lease and whether the lease rental provided therein is a fair and reasonable rental for the proposed building. Prior to final determination of such questions, so that this board may determine whether to execute such lease as now written or as modified. Be it further resolved that the Secretary of the Board is authorized and directed to publish a notice of such hearing required by law. Be it further resolved that the Council for the School Corporation or the Superintendent of the School Corporation is authorized and directed to select three appraisers to appraise the lease premises and to petition the Fulton County Circuit Court, in parentheses the court, to obtain an order approving the appraisal pursuant to Indiana Code 20-47-3. Be it further resolved, any officers of the board are authorized to execute a deed and sell the real estate at a price not less than that fixed by the court. Any questions or comments about that resolution? Somebody will think we sold a building. We didn't sell a building. It's lease and we can issue bonds. But every because time we do this, somebody thinks we sold a building. I forewarned Mr. Haas a couple of times that we weren't selling this building. <laughs> <laughs> If they think we're going to sell the building, please watch RTC4 or check the website. <laughs> Any other questions or comments about the resolution determining the need for a project? Or, I'm sorry, a, a resolution approving preliminary plans for lease and authorizing publication of notice of the hearing and lease. In that case, is there a motion? <laughs> motion made by Sandy. A second, a second by Steve. I'm not going to read it again. All in favor of the previously mentioned resolution signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And if it's as long as the last one, Rachel, I'm going to tell them to check the website. Carol's even there. Carol's <laughs> <laughs> there. There's light at the end of the Two page. Two pager? I think I've read it. Uh, and now we're going to move on to under information analysis. We're going to attempt to adopt a resolution reapproving formation of building corporation. This is, we lease the building to them and they issue bonds on our behalf. We're not selling the building again. Again, no sale. Whereas Rochester Multi-School Building Corporation, the building corporation has been, has been formed as a not-for-profit corporation to assist in financing, renovating, constructing, and improving facilities within the Rochester Community School Corporation, the school corporation. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of School Trustees, the board of the school corporation as follows. Section 1, it's hereby determined to be proper in the public interest of the citizens of the school corporation to reapprove the incorporation of the building corporation known and designated as the Rochester Multi-School Building Corporation for the purpose of financing, renovating, constructing, and equipping certain school facilities and leasing same to the school corporation. Section 2, that the articles of incorporation and bylaws of the building corporation previously presented to the board are hereby reapproved. Section 3, that providing for the financing, renovating, constructing, and equipping of such school facilities by the school by the building corporation and the leasing of the same to this school corporation is in the public interest of the citizens of this school corporation. And it is a proper public purpose for which this board agrees to cooperate with the building corporation and to assist it in fulfilling the requirements of all agencies of the federal, state, and local governments. Section 4, that the issuance, sale, and delivery by the building corporation of one or more bond, more series of bonds designated Rochester Multi-School Building Corporation ad valorem, property tax first mortgage bond series 2018, or such other name or series designation as determined at the time of the sale, the bonds, is the aggregate principal amount of approximately $10 million is hereby approved. Section 5, that upon the redemption and retirement of the bonds, the school corporation will accept, it will accept from the building corporation title to such school facilities free and clear of any and all liens and encumbrances thereon. Section 6, that this board hereby reapproves the current directors of the building corporation. Section 7, that the building corporation may issue, sell, and deliver the bonds pursuant to the applicable laws of the state of Indiana. 
may encumber any real property or equipment acquired by it for the purpose of financing the construction and equipping of such school facilities, and may enter into contracts for the sale of bonds and the construction and acquisition of such school facilities. And Section 8, the school corporation reasonably expects that tax-exempt tax obligations issued by or on behalf of the school corporation, including the bonds as well as other bonds and temporary loan warrants to the school corporation, will not exceed $15 million in the calendar year 2018. Pursuant to Section 148, subsection F4D of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986, as amended, the code, the school corporation irrevocably allocates the building corporation $10 million of its $15 million limit for purposes of qualifying for the small governmental exception to the rebate requirement. Any questions or comments on that resolution? In that case, is there a motion to adopt the resolution reapproving the formation of building corporation? You know, I want to hold that. Kerry is on that corporation. I probably will abstain just because I want to avoid any conflict of interest for that. So, is there now a, a motion to carry me as my wife for the public out there for RTC4? So, I'm going to abstain from that vote just to avoid any conflict of interest. Is there a motion for the resolution reapproving formation of the building conflict corporation? Second. Motion made by Stacy. Is there a second? Second, uh, Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the resolution of pre approving formation of the building corporation, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 5 to 0 with one abstention. Communication calendar update. I sent out, uh, per our uh, uh, organizational meeting last week, there was a request for information about the study session dates from uh, the traditional Wednesday to um, either Monday, Tuesday, or Friday. And I have almost everybody's uh, responses still waiting on at least one person's response. I'm comfortable in saying that um, we could have the next study session on February 12th. It's a Monday at 9 a.m. and I'll work with the administrative teams to reschedule. And I've almost got that calendar updated still waiting. Rick is out of the country right now. Um, and got a couple late responses here at the end of the day, but we'll email that out to you as soon as I get those responses but I'm comfortable with the amount of responses that Monday, February 12th at 9 a.m. we can move forward with our next study session. And then as soon as I hear from Rick, I'll pull that together and email it to everybody. But it's out there and pulling it together. Questions or comments for Mrs. Vance? Um, in that case, I believe we move on. We don't need a motion or anything to prove that. We'll set that up and we'll have a board of the Personnel report, there are four for Spring Intersection. Amy Banks for Columbia Second Grade. Amy Freeman for Columbia First Grade. Kylie Day for Columbia Kindergarten. And Stacia Conrad for Columbia Instructional Assistance. Are there any questions or comments from Mrs. Vance on the personnel report? I, I have a gold star for the first one. Yeah, <laughs> You're just an overachiever, Mr. Steiner. Julie, I specifically waited after Thursday to get that to you. Sorry, I'm not listening. Hey, snow days? It's a good plan in that. It's going to be cold again tomorrow. Too. I know, I know. My phone keeps going off with other superintendents. So. Are there any other questions or comments from Mrs. Vance about the personnel report? In that case, is there a motion to approve the personnel report? Motion made by Sandy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the personnel report as given, please signify by raising your right hand. <coughs> motion carries six to zero. Superintendent's business. The only thing I'd like to share is today we exhausted our three makeup days in the calendar. The calendar is on our website if you'd like to reference it. So um, our makeup days we will now utilize February 19th, April 6th and May 4th within the regular calendar as those make updates and bring teachers and students back into the building then. If we have additional days, and my phone has been going off the entire time. Dylan's the already system, said, hey, Mrs. Vance, the local superintendents uh, <laughs> talking, so I need to get caught up to speed on that. If we miss any more, we would go into e-learning days. And the plan with the administrative team and the teachers is that we are comfortable using up to three e-learning days once, um, if we miss another full day of school, we would immediately call the team together, try to find a day that works best across the district. 
um, would be at least disruptive, and I know that's hard with a lot of athletic teams and those things on the weekend, but we'll do our best to schedule and start communicating that out, and Scott's grinning at me because that's a lot of work on the technology part department as well. So we've used those three days that we have built into the calendar. The next three days, if we miss three more, would be e-learning days, and we would do our best to communicate to teachers, the admin team, the community, make sure that that's well set up. We've always had the help of local entities as well, willing to open their doors. We open up some of our buildings as well here to help support families. If we get into missing days four and five after that, we'd be actually looking as the calendar was adopted, absorbing some of that spring break time at the end of spring break, but hopefully we won't get there. Hopefully. Hopefully. But yeah, it's not looking too good for tomorrow morning at least. Any questions of Mrs. Vance? Is there any further business to discuss? I just one comment. I want to thank the principals for coming. You know, you guys aren't required to come, but took the time to come, and if the board has questions, you're here, and I really appreciate that. So, thank you. It's a good team. We have a good team. Mr. Bernanke had the gold star last week. We're being the only one here. He was worried about it. Even notes of it. No, no, we're not. <laughs> They work hard and have fun. Andy, I thought you meant that like he showed up here last Monday. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Any public comment? I know there's only four people out there with joints off for public comment. Maybe careful asking them for public comment. Well, come on on. Bring it on. We are not selling your building, Mr. <laughs> Those, Any further? Those, those senators that we're selling, those weren't using the phone yet. I'm sure it was a science project. <laughs> Any further business for the board to discuss? In that case, we'll consider the meeting adjourned.